In this video, we will explore the intricate anatomy of the visual pathway, delving into its complex structure and function, and examining how it processes and interprets visual information from the eyes to the brain. In this video, our journey begins with an introductory overview of the visual pathway. We'll then proceed to meticulously describe each component, including the optic nerve, optic chiasm, optic tract, lateral geniculate body, optic radiations, and the visual cortex, highlighting their unique roles and interconnections. Finally, we will conclude with a comprehensive summary, emphasizing the significance of these components in visual processing and perception. Optical pathways in the human visual system encompass a network of structures and neural routes that are essential for transmitting visual information. These pathways are responsible for transmitting retinal light impressions from the eyes to the brain's cortical vision centers. They are composed of a series of interconnected components, each with a distinct function. The journey of visual information begins at the optic nerve, continues through the optic chiasm, traverses the optic tract, passes the lateral geniculate body, moves along the optic radiations, and culminates in the visual cortex. Each segment of this pathway is critical. The optic nerve carries visual information from the retina, the optic chiasm allows for the crossing of nerve fibers, contributing to binocular vision, and the optic tract acts as a bridge conveying signals to various brain areas. The lateral geniculate body serves as a relay center, processing and directing visual information to the appropriate regions. The optic radiations then transmit these signals to the visual cortex, where complex processing results in the perception of images. Damage to any of these components can lead to specific alterations in vision, manifesting as changes in the visual field. For example, lesions in the optic nerve may result in blindness in one eye, while damage to the optic chiasm can cause loss of peripheral vision. Lesions in the optic tract, lateral geniculate body, or optic radiations lead to characteristic patterns of visual field loss. Thus, the nature of the visual field defect can be a critical clue in localizing and diagnosing lesions within these pathways. The optic nerve, or the second cranial nerve, is a crucial component of the visual pathway, beginning its journey as a collection of axons from ganglion cells situated in the retina. These axons converge to form the optic nerve, which emerges from the back of the eye at the optic disc, a point where there are no photoreceptor cells, often referred to as the blind spot. Anatomically, the optic nerve is encased in a sheath of meninges, similar to those surrounding the brain, and is bathed in cerebrospinal fluid. This nerve travels through the bony orbit of the eye and the optic canal, a narrow passage in the sphenoid bone. As the nerve progresses, it carries the vital visual signals from the retina and moves posteriorly towards the brain. The path of the optic nerve is characterized by a slight arc to accommodate eye movement. Upon reaching the optic chiasm, located at the base of the brain near the hypothalamus, the optic nerve fibers undergo a partial decussation or crossing. Here, the fibers from the nasal, or medial, half of each retina cross to the opposite side, ensuring that visual information from the right field of view of both eyes is processed in the left hemisphere of the brain, and vice versa. This anatomical arrangement is pivotal for binocular vision and depth perception, as it allows the visual cortex to receive input from both eyes for the same field of view. After crossing at the chiasm, the fibers continue as the optic tracts. The optic disc or the optic nerve head is a notable feature in the retina where the optic nerve connects to the eye. Also referred to as the optic papilla, this area is divided into three anatomically distinct regions, the prelaminar region, situated anteriorly to the scleral lamina, this region marks the beginning of the optic nerve head. It is defined by the choroidoscleral canal, forming the periphery of the optic disc. Here, the optic nerve fibers are unmyelinated, allowing direct observation of the nerve fibers through an ophthalmoscope. The papillary excavation, a central depression, is a key feature. In conditions like glaucoma, this depression can deepen, indicating potential nerve damage. The lamina cribrosa, resembling a sieve, this mesh-like structure is located within the optic disc. It serves as a critical junction where optic nerve fibers, stemming from retinal ganglion cells, pass towards the brain. Primarily made up of collagen and elastic fibers, it provides structural integrity and adaptability to the optic nerve, especially important given the variations in intraocular pressure. And the retrolamina region, this region lies posterior to the lamina cribrosa. It is characterized by the myelination of optic nerve fibers, which occurs immediately after they pass through the lamina cribrosa. 
This myelination is critical for the rapid transmission of visual information to the brain. The retrolaminar region also has a richer vascular supply compared to the prelaminar region, supplied by the short posterior ciliary arteries. The structural integrity and health of this region are vital for the overall function of the optic nerve, as it transitions from the eye to the brain's visual pathways. The course of the optic nerve is intricate, extending obliquely backward and inward from the eye, and can be categorized into several distinct segments, intraorbital portion. This segment is further subdivided into two parts, the intraocular part, also known as the retrolaminar region, is the initial portion of the optic nerve, situated within the eye. It originates at the optic disc, where the nerve fibers emerge from the retina. And the orbital part follows after the optic nerve exits the eye. It is approximately 25 to 30 mm in length and travels within the orbital fat and connective tissues. Encased in meningeal sheaths and bathed in cerebrospinal fluid, similar to the brain, this part of the nerve adopts a slightly curved, elongated S shape. This curvature is essential as it forms the central axis of the musculoaponeurotic cone, allowing the eye to move freely without stretching the nerve. Intracanalicular portion, continuing its path, the optic nerve then enters the optic canal. This narrow bony passageway, located within the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone, measures about 6 to 10 millimeters. This segment is pivotal as it marks the transition of the optic nerve from the orbit to the cranial cavity. Intracranial portion, the final segment of the optic nerve, this portion lies within the middle stage of the skull base. Approximately 10 millimeters in length, it extends from the optic canal up to the optic chiasm. Here, the nerve forms the anteroexternal angle of the chiasm, a critical juncture where the optic nerve fibers intersect and partially cross over to the opposite side. This crossing is vital for binocular vision, as it allows the visual cortex to process images from both eyes, enabling depth perception and a wide field of view. The optic nerve sheaths are the protective coverings that surround the optic nerve, crucial for its protection and support. These sheaths, continuous with the meninges of the brain, consist of three distinct layers, each with unique characteristics and functions. The outermost layer, the dura mater, is the toughest and most durable. It envelopes the optic nerve from its intracranial entry point at the optic foramen in the optic canal, extending to where it fuses with the sclera of the eye. This layer forms the external covering of the optic nerve and is responsible for providing significant mechanical protection against external forces. Positioned as the middle layer between the dura mater and the pia mater, the arachnid mater is a thin, transparent sheath. It is primarily composed of two sheets of collagen and elastic fibers. The arachnoid mater's structure enables it to provide a cushioning effect, safeguarding the optic nerve from mechanical shocks and vibrations. Lastly, the pia mater, the innermost layer, is a delicate and highly vascularized membrane that intimately adheres to the surface of the optic nerve. It plays a crucial role in maintaining the structural integrity of the nerve, providing a supportive framework for the blood vessels that supply it. Between the arachnoid and pia mater lies the subarachnoid space, filled with cerebrospinal fluid. This fluid-filled space not only cushions the optic nerve, but also helps to maintain a stable environment for the nerve fibers. The cerebrospinal fluid in the subarachnoid space is in continuous communication with the cerebrospinal fluid within the brain, facilitating the balance of fluid and pressure dynamics across the central nervous system. This connection is fundamental in protecting the optic nerve and ensuring its optimal functioning. The blood supply of the optic nerve is intricate and essential for its functionality. It is provided by a network of arteries, specifically adapted to the distinct segments of the optic nerve. The intracranial and intracanalicular portions of the optic nerve receive their blood supply from branches of the ophthalmic artery and pile vessels. The intracanalicular part, located within the confines of the bony optic canal, is particularly noteworthy. Due to the limited space in this region, its blood supply is relatively sparse and more susceptible to injury, making it a critical area for the health of the optic nerve. The vascularization of the intraorbital portion of the optic nerve is categorized based on the entry point of the central retinal artery, found at the ventral surface of the nerve. Behind the entry point, the optic nerve is predominantly vascularized by peripheral vessels, known as pile arteries. These arteries weave around the optic nerve, forming a network that provides essential nutrients and oxygen. Forward of the entry point, the blood supply strategy is twofold. 
peripheral pile arteries maintain their role in nourishing the outer layers of the optic nerve. Additionally, a central vascular supply, stemming from branches of the central retinal artery, plays a crucial role in supplying blood to the inner portions of the optic nerve. This vascular arrangement ensures that all regions of the optic nerve receive adequate blood flow, which is vital for maintaining its health and optimal functioning. The optic chiasm situated at the junction where the two optic nerves converge, create a characteristic X-shaped or quadrilateral structure. This structure seamlessly connects with the optic tracts posteriorly, forming an integral part of the visual pathway. Located strategically at the base of the brain, the optic chiasm lies directly beneath the hypothalamus and posterior to the tubercle of the cella turcica, a bony structure of the sphenoid bone. This location is critical as it positions the chiasm close to key brain areas involved in hormonal regulation and autonomic functions. The most significant aspect of the optic chiasm is the process of decussation, or the crossing over of optic fibers. Specifically, the fibers from the nasal, medial, side of each retina cross to the opposite side at the chiasm. This crossing pattern is essential for binocular vision, as it enables the visual fields of both eyes to overlap, providing depth perception and a wider field of view. Moreover, the partial crossing over at the optic chiasm ensures that visual information from the right half of the visual field, perceived by both eyes, is processed in the left hemisphere of the brain and vice versa. The optic chiasm also has clinical significance. Lesions or abnormalities in this area can lead to specific types of visual field defects, such as bitemporal hemianopia, where the outer, temporal, halves of the visual field in both eyes are lost. The optic tract plays a crucial role in the human visual pathway. Following the optic chiasm, where a partial crossing of nerve fibers occurs, the optic nerves bifurcate into two optic tracts. Each tract is a distinct, white, cord-like structure, consisting of cylindrical bundles of nerve fibers. These fibers stretch outwards and backwards from the posterolateral aspect of the optic chiasm, a configuration essential for the proper relay of visual information. Anatomically, the optic tract is characterized by its unique, flattened, and elongated shape, with an approximate length of 3 cm. This particular form aids in its function as a neural pathway. As it progresses, the optic tract wraps around the cerebral peduncle, a structure located at the base of the brain which is involved in motor function. Eventually, the optic tract reaches its termination at the lateral geniculate body in the thalamus. Damage or lesions along the optic tract can lead to specific types of visual deficits, such as homonymous hemianopia, where there is a loss of the same field of vision in both eyes. The lateral geniculate body, also known as the lateral geniculate nucleus, is an essential structure within the visual pathway of the brain. Located at a key junction in this pathway, it serves as the pivotal relay center between the first and second neurons involved in visual processing. The LGN is tasked with receiving input from the retinal ganglion cells via the optic tract. Once this input is received, the LGN undertakes the critical process of organizing and refining the visual signals before they are relayed to the visual cortex in the occipital lobe for advanced processing. This includes integral functions in perception such as color differentiation and motion detection. In this structure, the axons of retinothalamic cells, which originate in the retina, terminate. Anatomically, the lateral geniculate bodies are situated adjacent to the pulvina of the thalamus, which itself is near the base of the brain. Each LGN has a distinct, elongated, oval shape, and is uniquely twisted back and forth on itself. This particular shape contributes to its functional efficacy in processing visual signals. From a vascular perspective, the LGN is well supplied by the anterior and posterior choroidal arteries. This rich blood supply is essential for maintaining the health of the neurons and ensuring the efficient processing of visual information. Clinically, damage or lesions to the LGN can lead to various types of visual disturbances. These can include specific defects in the visual field, such as homonymous hemianopia, or broader problems with visual perception. Optic radiations, or geniculocalcarin tracts, are integral to the visual system bridging the lateral geniculate nucleus and the primary visual cortex. These white matter bundles begin at the lateral geniculate nucleus in the thalamus and span posteriorly through the brain, intricately weaving through the parietal and temporal lobes. The dual components of these radiations, the superior and inferior, are tasked with relaying information from different parts of the visual field, 
the superior radiations carrying data from the lower field through the parietal lobe, and the inferior radiations, including Meyer's loop, transmitting from the upper fields via the temporal lobe. These pathways are further subdivided into four parts, each playing a unique role in visual signal transmission, the initial part or optic pedicle, here. A robust bundle of nerve fibers extends outward and upward from the lateral geniculate nucleus. The knee, marked by a critical bending point, the knee of the optic radiations is where the fibers take a sharp turn backward. The middle part, characterized by anteroposteriorly oriented fibers, this segment ensures the directed and efficient flow of visual signals toward their ultimate destination. And the terminal part, as the journey of the optic radiations nears its end, the fibers curve inward toward the calcarine fissure in the occipital lobe. The anatomical complexity of optic radiations means that damage to these tracts can have profound effects on vision. Depending on the location of the lesion, various types of visual field deficits can occur. For instance, damage to the right parietal lobe can result in left lower quadrantinopia, indicating the loss of the lower quarter of the visual field in both eyes. The visual cortex, located in the occipital lobe at the back of the brain, is intricately structured and specialized for processing visual information. It consists of several distinct areas, each contributing to different aspects of visual perception, the striate cortex, also known as the primary visual cortex or V1. This is the most fundamental area within the visual cortex, where visual stimuli from the retinas are first processed. It is characterized by a distinctive striated appearance due to the layering of neurons and their connections. In the primary cortex, basic visual elements such as light intensity, shape, size, and color are extracted and processed. Beyond the primary cortex, there are higher-order visual areas involved in more complex aspects of vision, known as the areas for integration and motor responses. These areas integrate the basic visual information with other sensory inputs and motor responses, contributing to functions like depth perception, motion detection, and spatial awareness. Anatomically, the occipital lobe is marked by six gyri, or ridges, each separated by sulci, which are grooves or depressions. These gyri and sulci increase the surface area of the cortex, allowing for a denser packing of neurons and more complex processing capabilities. The posterior cerebral artery plays a crucial role in the vascular supply of the visual cortex. Disruptions in this blood flow can result in visual impairments or loss, underscoring the artery's critical role in maintaining the functionality of the visual cortex. In conclusion, the visual pathway's anatomy is a testament to the intricacy and precision of the human body's design. Starting with the critical act of physical stimulation within the retina, functioning as the primary sensor, captures light and converts it into electrical signals. These signals then embark on a meticulously charted journey through the optic nerve, navigating the complex neural network of the brain. As the signals traverse the optic chiasm and travel through the optic tracts and radiations, they reach the visual cortex, the brain's central processor for visual information. Here, in this sophisticated neural hub, the electrical impulses undergo rigorous decoding and analysis. The visual cortex, with its intricate layers and connections, interprets these signals, integrating them with other sensory information and previous experiences. This interpretation leads to the formation of visual perception, enabling us to not only see but also understand and interact with our surroundings.